In this video, we're going to be looking at the following integral. We have here the integral of um, dx over secant x minus 1. So we're going to be looking at how to use some um, trig identities to help us solve this particular integral. That'll be the focus. So when I look at this, I see that I can't apply a rule to it right away. And maybe it's not so clear how to use um, some sort of algebra. Um, but I certainly can't use u substitution on it as is, because if I let u be that denominator, um, my derivative would be secant x tan x, and I don't see that anywhere in the numerator. So I do want to incorporate some sort of algebra here. And the um, trick that I want to use here is to multiply um, by essentially 1. So I'm going to multiply by by the conjugate. We're familiar with the idea of multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply by this secant x plus 1 over secant x um, plus 1. So this is an algebraic trick called um, multiplying by 1. So we're not changing what's there, but it's going to make it look a little bit different, um, maybe a little bit easier to do some um, algebraic manipulations with it. So this gives me the integral of secant x plus 1 dx all over here, this secant x minus 1 times secant x plus 1 is going to give me secant um, squared x. I'll have minus a secant x plus secant x, and then minus 1. Um, so this is where we want to remember some of our trig identities and see if there might be a trig identity that's going to be um, helpful to us. So let me go over to the side here. So remember that we know, um, for example, that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So that's a, what's called a Pythagorean identity um, relating sine and cosine. So we know sine squared plus cosine squared or cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Um, I can also, by manipulating that identity just a little bit, get an identity that relates secant squared and tangent squared. So if I divide every term in this um, identity here by cosine squared, Let's see what that's going to give us. So now I have 1, cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. And then 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Um, so the identities of cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, and 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Those are key um, Pythagorean trig identities that we'll see quite a lot um, in this course. So how is this second one going to be helpful to me? Well, notice that I can write tan squared is equal to secant squared x minus 1. So I can replace that secant squared x minus 1 by tan squared x. Okay, so we had this first step of doing the trick of multiplying by 1. Now we're going to, oops, um, in our next step here, use a trig identity. And a lot of what you're going to notice as we get um, later into chapter 8 is that this section is introducing um, a lot of techniques that we're going to see later through some um, basic examples, but we'll be incorporating these techniques into some more involved examples later, um, such as using trig identities here. So notice that I now have secant x plus 1. Um, dx all over tangent squared x. And I notice that what I have um, here is now a common denominator of this, this tan squared x with two different things in my numerator. So I can use the technique of now splitting this up into two pieces. So we're incorporating a technique that we've seen before. So this is going to be the integral of secant x all over tan squared x dx plus the integral of 1 over tan squared x dx. Okay, so going from um, up here to here now, we are using that technique of splitting the fractions. Okay, so what can I do next here? Well, I know that secant x is 1 over cosine. I know that tangent x is um, sine x over cosine x, so I could try to rewrite those in terms of sines and cosines. That's probably going to be um, a helpful technique, and that's often um, a good strategy when you're dealing with things in terms of secants and tangents. Try to simplify things, get them back in terms of sines and cosines. So recall that secant x is 1 over cosine x, and tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So. If I just do a little bit of scratch work off to the side here, this secant x over tan squared x 
is equal to 1 over cosine x divided by sine squared over cosine squared. So divided by, whoops, divided by sine squared x over cosine squared x. So that gives me 1 over cosine x times cosine squared x over sine squared x. So this simplifies a little bit, and I've got cosine x over sine squared x. Okay, so let's see why that's a little bit better for us. So I've got cosine x all over sine squared x dx. And then notice that this 1 over tangent squared can be written as cotangent squared dx. We know that 1 over tangent is our cotangent function. Okay. So notice that when I have this written as cosine x over sine squared x, that's now in a form where u substitution is going to be useful. So I'm going to be able to use u substitution here. Um, with my cotangent squared, I'm actually going to want to make use of another identity. So notice that over here I wrote 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared x by dividing the cosine squared plus sine squared identity here equal to 1 all by cosine squared. If I take this same identity, oops, but divide each term by sine squared, so that's cosine squared x divided by sine squared, I would get cotangent x divides sine squared by sine squared, we get 1, and then 1 divided by sine squared would be cosecant squared x. So that's another um, Pythagorean identity that we will sometimes use. So that's if we divided each of those terms by sine squared x. Okay, so we can make use of that identity here, noticing that if cotangent squared x plus 1 is cosecant squared, then cotangent squared would be cosecant squared x minus 1. Okay, so th I know there's a lot going on in this problem, but practicing this, these manipulations is going to be really helpful for us going forward. Um, so I said we can use u substitution, and here we're going to use an identity to help us. So why is it helpful to replace um, cotangent squared um, by this cosecant squared minus 1? Well, if we look at our um, different integration rules, I have a rule for the integral of cotangent, but I don't have one for cotangent squared. Um, but I do have an um, antiderivative rule for the integral of cosecant squared. So this is why um, when faced with an integral of um, tan squared, I'll want to rewrite that as um, what tan squared is equal to, secant squared minus 1, because I can make use of this rule 11 to be able to in in, um, integrate secant squared x. And if I'm given an integral of cotangent squared x, I'm going to want to use the identity that allows me to write cotangent squared as cosecant squared minus 1. Okay, so that's why those two identities are going to be useful and why you'd want to convert cotangent squared to having a cosecant squared because we have a rule for that and why if I was faced with tangent squared I'd want to replace it with secant squared minus 1 and then use my rule for um, secant squared. Okay. So let's look at using some um, the u substitution here on that first piece. So we can let u be the inside of our more complicated function. So I have that sine squared. So I'm going to let u be sine x. And then my derivative is nicely cosine x. So this is going to be the integral of um, 1 over u squared du. And then I'm replacing that cotangent squared x by my cosecant squared x minus 1 identity. Okay, so it looks like I didn't leave myself quite enough room, so we'll have to just kind of continue down here just a little bit. So the integral of um, u to the negative 2 then, we know that's u to the um, negative 1 over negative 1, or negative 1 over u. And then I'm going to need to do my integral of cosecant squared. So if you need to recall what that is, integral of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. So we're using this piece right here. So I've got negative cotangent x minus x and then plus c. Um, I tend to remember the um, integrals of things like secant squared. I remember the integral of secant squared is tangent x. And then so I know cosecant squared is related um, and that the 
derivatives of my co-functions were all negative, so I know the integral of cosecant squared must be negative cotangent. Um, so when you're talking about remembering the different rules that are on here, it's good to kind of think about maybe you just remember this set, 9, 11, and 13, because 10, 12, and 14 are really similar with the co-functions. Um, so anytime you can kind of mi uh, minimize what you have to remember and, and make connections with things, that'll, that'll always be um, a really useful um, thing to do. So let's go ahead and finish this one off. So I'm going to have negative um, 1 over what my u was. My u is sine x. So negative 1 over sine x plus negative cotangent x minus x plus c. And I could leave it like that, or I could decide to write 1 over sine in terms of cosecant. Again, cosecant x is 1 over sine x. Um, so I have negative cosecant x minus cotangent x minus x plus c is equal to, I'll just go ahead and rewrite the integral we started with because sometimes these problems get quite long. We want to remember what we were trying to solve in the first place. So I have that is equal to my integral of 1 over secant x minus 1 dx.